Welcome back everyone to another episode of Direct Comparison. In today's episode, we're taking a look at the recently released Luigi's Mansion 3 and seeing how it compares both visually and from a gameplay perspective to the original Nintendo GameCube game Luigi's Mansion. Though I will also point out changes that were a direct result of features that were added to the 3DS exclusive Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. Also, bear in mind that these two games are separated by nearly 20 years of graphical evolution and hardware advancements so we should expect to see improvements in just about every field. But it's still interesting to see how the visual design and aesthetic has changed regardless. Alright, so let's kick this comparison off by looking at our reluctant hero, Luigi, and how he has changed since the original game. Because of the cartoon-like design, Luigi has aged remarkably well for a game from 2001. Not much has changed for the character, aside from the massive increase to the polygon count. Luigi's still wearing the exact same outfit, only now with much higher resolution textures, allowing players to see the stitching in his cap, shirt, and overalls. And there are a few new details added to things like his gloves and waistband. These improvements extend to his friend, Professor E. Gad, whose sharp lines around his mouth have been replaced with softer, more subtle lines defined mainly by shading and shadow. It's subtle, but it gives the character a much more polished appearance. The ghosts have also been reworked, with more of a Casper inspiration this time around. Ghosts now mostly have a dark blue glow in both glowing eyes and mouth, whereas in the original, the ghost appeared in a larger variety of colors, and the mouths did not glow at all. Now, let's take a look at some of the animations. Much like the original game, Luigi's default stance when standing in the dark environments of the mansion, or in this case the hotel, is him shivering and cowering in fear. But instead of just his head and nose shaking uncontrollably, Luigi now appears to shake all over. His eyelids quiver slightly, the flashlight shakes a bit, and his mouth opens and closes more naturally. When Luigi gets really scared, he'll jump into the air like the old games, and will also take a little bit to return to his default animation loop. Ghosts have seen an even bigger improvement to their animations, with more fluid movement than their stiff 2001 counterparts. But one of the biggest changes to Luigi's Mansion 3 is the new environment. Despite the name, Luigi's Mansion 3 takes place in the Last Resort Hotel, a massive tower that the heroes decide to travel to on vacation. But, just like the past games in the series, things quickly go wrong, and Luigi is forced to walk the haunted halls to find his friends. While it's not quite the same as the classic mansion design, the hotel still features the same great variety that made the original two games so much fun. Players can still explore places like gardens, kitchens, and bedrooms, only now each floor offers a distinct theme, like an Egyptian pyramid or early 90s art deco. Environments are also decorated significantly more now, with tons of both static and dynamic props throughout each scene. This is an important feature for a Luigi's Mansion game, as the player's vacuum can manipulate many of the objects directly and can even pull things like sheets off of beds and tables, something that still looks pretty impressive in the original game. Lighting in Luigi's Mansion 3 has been improved drastically. Lighting now appears more volumetric, especially in some of the opening sequences prior to everything going bad. Lighting now wraps around object models properly, which helps make the characters feel like they're actually part of the environment. These environments also feel noticeably darker, thanks to real-time lighting effects mixed with some well-implemented static environmental lights. Reflective surfaces have also been greatly improved, with the marble floors properly reflecting characters and objects, and even reflecting the effect from Luigi's vacuum. But one of the best improvements to the lighting is Luigi's flashlight. In the original, you can see individual flat white rays coming from the flashlight, but now, the effect looks more realistic, and the torchlight itself now properly lights up the environment that the light is pointed to, not just areas in the general direction that the light is facing. And while the original game's lighting is of course not as advanced, it still holds up surprisingly well, with some nice reflective surfaces in a few of the rooms, and some decent shadow projections relative to the active light source. Shadows are a major part of Luigi's Mansion, as players will be spending most of their time in the dark with a flashlight. And just like the original game, almost every prop in the environment cast a shadow relative to Luigi's distance. But unlike the original, an additional source of light does not remove the rest of the environmental shadows, and multiple shadow projections can be rendered at once, making for a more believable presentation. And then there's special effects. The Luigi Mansion games really don't offer that many special effects. There's some fire and water effects when using the elemental attacks, but I haven't found a similar gameplay mechanic in the new game as of yet. Though, both games do feature small candles throughout their spooky environments, and as expected, the resolution and quality of this effect is definitely an improvement in the latest game. Water also appears much better now thanks to the enhanced reflective surfaces and superior lighting. But one of Luigi's Mansion 3's most impressive effects is its physics. 
There are hundreds of small dynamic objects in each environment that react directly to Luigi's vacuum. And because of this, if you really wanted to, you could spend hours just vacuuming up messes in each room. And just like the original game, cloth physics are in play, allowing players to realistically pull on curtains and bedsheets. However, there is one thing that I believe the original did better here, the dust effects. In the original game, the world always felt like it's covered in a thick layer of dust that can be realistically vacuumed up. This dust is always present and will continuously emit from ledges and surfaces if the player returns to the same spot, but the fact that the particles actually move independently and towards the vacuum nozzle is still impressive. The new game doesn't feature any sort of dust, which I guess you can say is because the hotel is much cleaner, but it would have been cool to see this return in some way or another. Finally, let's talk about the gameplay. Luigi's Mansion 3 has similar controls to the original game, but many of the mechanics function differently. First, the flashlight no longer can be turned on and off to surprise enemies. Instead, it's used more for aiming, and once a player has lined up their target, they can activate a strobe to stun their ghost enemies instead. Wrangling ghosts feels roughly the same, but now players can fill up a slam meter that will allow players to mash the ghost repeatedly on the ground, dealing extra damage to it and any ghosts and objects around it. Luigi can also perform a jumping burst that can help free space around the player, and can launch plungers at flat surfaces that can then be pulled on to move heavier objects. Another change that was first introduced with Dark Moon is the Dark Light attachment, that lets players find invisible objects and enemies, adding a bit more variety to the gameplay loop that was fairly repetitive in the original. The game's save and revive system has also been completely changed. In the original game, players would need to save their progress at toads hidden around the mansion, similar to the typewriter design of early Resident Evil games. But now, progress is saved after a player opens a door, allowing players to get right back into the action if they faint during a battle. Luigi's Mansion 3 features a large variety of enemies, from standard ghosts to more advanced ones that grab the player or jump scare them. But the most interesting ghosts are the boss types. Bosses return and require players to solve puzzles just as before, though they do feel more simplistic this time around. In the original game, there were standard ghosts that would spawn in various rooms and hallways, then more advanced ghosts that appear more like humans. These ghosts required players to use their Game Boy Horror to identify a weakness, and then find a way to exploit it, like waiting for them to yawn or opening a window to catch them off guard. Some of these ghosts also functioned as bosses that featured multiple attack patterns and required multiple capture attempts. The new game has bosses like this, but not quite as often, and they start off much simpler than the original. Luigi's Mansion 3 also sees the return of the Gooigi co-op mechanic, first introduced with the remaster of the original game for the 3DS. Only this time, it's much more involved. Gooigi isn't just another playable Luigi, it's actually an important gameplay mechanic that's required of the players regardless. After progressing far enough into the story, players can press the right stick button to spawn Gooigi, and can swap between them to complete puzzles. Because of Gooigi's gelatinous form, he can walk straight through certain doors, but he can also dissolve into puddles of water, and is more vulnerable to attacks. Luigi's Mansion 3 also sees the return of the Scare Scraper game mode from Dark Moon, only now, players can play with up to 8 players, 2 for each Switch system, and can complete puzzles and capture ghosts together. Alternatively, there's also a set of competitive game modes to play, that challenge players to capture ghosts, shoot cannons at targets, and collect coins in rubber duck floats. And that wraps up this episode of Direct Comparison. Overall, Luigi's Mansion 3 is a quality improvement over the original title, with more varied locations, enemies, and tons of new gameplay features. There's a few novel things like the dust effects and that eerie silent audio score that are missing from the new release, but otherwise, it's absolutely worth checking out if you're a big fan of the series and looking for a unique title to play on the Nintendo Switch. But what do you guys think? Do you think Luigi's Mansion 3 is an improvement, or do you prefer the design of the original titles? Let me know in the comments section. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos posted every week.